On the count of three. One, two, three. Butch Willis. Say it. Yeah. That's him. When I heard Butch, I thought of people uh, as crazy as it might seem, like Bob Dylan or Neil Young at his best. TV's from outer space. In the record store in Tacoma Park, when we opened up in, I guess, 74, it only took a couple of years for the really crazy people to find me. It was basically a, you know, a low-rent uh, artist's enclave there, and, and Joe's Record Paradise uh, was kind of like the City Lights bookstore for all of us derelicts. Most famous for uh, helping bring Root Boy Slim to prominence. Root Boy Slim and Butch Willis. I want to be a rock star. I don't want to be nothing but a rock star. I think Butch wanted money, and Butch always had an idea of like being a, quote, rock star. I thought he was interesting, and I, I like the way he talks and the way he sings. And you know, he basically breaks all the rules of what we expect from from a singer. Butch Willis um, uh, being filmed for Heavy Metal Parking Lot, or in Heavy Metal Parking Lot, or at Heavy Metal Parking yeah. Lot, and he was cut from Heavy Metal Parking Lot. That's going on in Butch's head. The person going on stage doesn't know exactly what he's going to do. The band doesn't know exactly what's going to happen. We don't know. Butch blew through that inheritance. Mullet hairdo before it was fashionable. Jeff Krulik, man, calling us up, got us all arranged. Joe Lee, everybody, Pat Carroll's there. Everybody's there. Forestville Rocks. Butch Willis and the Rocks in my studio as they're performing, as I'm recording this concert. And it was just, you know, I was just blown away. Butch's father would drive him to my store at 12 o'clock every day and just drop him off and wouldn't pick him up till 6. So, I mean, I was in, in essence running a day, daycare center. I'm Alan Brion. One day, Al Brion came walking into the store and he was hitting his throat, making these weird sounds and I think he was doing Malaguena or something like that and I said listen buddy do you want to be part of a, a rock and roll group it's unlike anything you've ever seen before <laughs> would any other person do this <laughs> because you really don't know what's going through his head what's gonna happen what the music's gonna be if Butch was ever sharing the bill with somebody else, he was always the, the one that everybody remembered. One that I've always loved the most is Pizza on My Jeans. Really just spoke to me. <laughs> High school hippie. I, I don't follow no rules. I, I, don't, I don't like principles. I, I, don't, I don't like schools. High school hippie don't care about rules. Don't like teachers, don't like school. Taking drugs in the hall, tripping in the classroom, staring at the wall. I'm a high school hippie, don't follow no rules. Don't like principles, don't like school. I mean, you know, that's a little slice of life for Butch, I think. Butch Willis and the Rocks. Nobody even knew who Butch Willis was. Newsletter. Come on and buy my newsletter. I'm going to marry my wife and get busted. Whatever Maryland accent it is that Butch has is one of the few accents left in this country that still sounds completely bizarre to everyone. Where were you, Santa, on the West Coast when I needed you the most? If you see Heavy Metal Parking Lot, you'll see her talking about jumping his bangs. It's the regional accent that we've all developed to some extent and don't notice it until you go to New York and they say, you're a hick. There you go. He was the elder statesman of Teen Beat. He brought uh, a knowledge and, of a history of rock and roll and an excitement of wanting to play, let's say, at the Capitol Center that a lot of other bands didn't have at the time. And that was, that was my first clue, like, well, the pants and then doing that. I thought, there's something a little unusual about this fellow. And he was um, just doing his songs and I had never heard, I had no idea what was going on and you guys were all, you know, radio rocks, I mean, you would, 
like sing along and drugs would do it to you. Like you, it would be like a sing along. And I was like, what is going on? Who is this man? What are these songs? What are these people doing? But I loved it. And like I said, it was so far from my perception of like the cool DC, you know, music scene. These people get it. They understand. And you know, here's book Butch singing, uh, Drugs will do it to you. And the, you hear the entire crowd going, rock, rock, rock. Drugs will do it to you. Rock, rock, rock. Makes you feel icy. Makes you feel spicy. Drugs will do it to you. Rock, rock, rock. Totally unplanned. And yet it was just one of those sort of great moments in a person's life. Tight 70s shirt that had the, the felt iron on letters. And so I made it. <laughs> And it said, I think it said Butch Willis on the front and then on the back, like on the seam, I put, and the rocks and like. Uh, yeah, Butch Willis. I think because I really wasn't familiar with psychedelic music that that really uh, shocked me. The thing is, is that his music is really good. I loved the music. I loved the way it sounded. Like somebody with a real vision. I don't know how he managed to make records that like profoundly good and profoundly weird working with, you know, like pretty normal musicians. I mean, you can give people a CD and they're like, what the hell is this? I'm like, no, 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 it's, you have to see him live. Forestville Rocks, Butch Willis. I was the host of the show, I was Mr. Rock and Roll. Uh, yeah, it's nice being on this Butch Willis documentary. Uh, I ain't got no virtuosos in my group, so I'm gonna sing a cappella. A cappella? It's a cappella. I mean, I don't have any love letters or anything from him. Well, I used to go visit Butch at his mom's, and uh, his mom was in very was very nice. He would buy two Budweisers and a pack of cigarettes with his daily allowance, I guess, from his mom. I guess he needed to buy some cocaine, so he asked his mother for a check for it, and in the memo she wrote cocaine. If your definition of an artist is someone who channels what he really feels about life into, into his art, then Butch is the truest artist probably that I've ever known. And I think Butch actually is is basically a good guy. And, and at least he some, has some creative output. I mean, most people just sit around and watch TV. You know, I've been known to do that. <laughs> Butch was never the same after he was kicked by a horse. Louie Tonight, the TV's from outer space. Kitty Cat, I miss her too much. The garden's outside. This is Pat Carroll for the Butch Willis documentary. That was my first exposure to the Butch Willis experience. And that's where the story begins. Amateur on plastic.